Hello, this is John Fallows, the creator of Ergo Radio Software. And, uh, you know, a lot of people ask us, why is the program called Ergo? And uh, there's an interesting story. Back in the, uh, in the late 1990s, there was a new receiver came out called the AOR AR7030. And uh, a lot of folks said, that's a great receiver, but we don't like the ergonomics of the front panel. And so Ergo was created to be an ergonomic substitute for controlling the AR7030. Uh, anyway, there's the history. I'm assuming you're showing up today because you want to uh, control your shortwave radio and you want some software to control it and do other things. And that's what Ergo is designed to do. It uh, connects to a wide variety of uh, radio receivers and uh, uses a serial port connection to control those receivers. It also connects to a number of software-defined radio uh, packages, so you can use Ergo to control software-defined radios as well as uh, traditional uh, radio receivers. This video is called the Quick Start Tutorial, and it's all about uh, giving you a demonstration of what happens the first time you run Ergo and how to hook it up and, and get started. Uh, the way you get started is to go to uh, the download page on our website and uh, just simply download the 60-day fully functional demonstration program, unzip it, and install it. It's a normal Windows installation program. And we also suggest before you install Ergo, you also download uh, the HFCC or EIBI database. These are available databases that have been pre-formatted for use with Ergo. Ergo uh, puts its data into a customized format uh, that adds a number of features, enabling it to control the radio and control propagation and mapping information. So once you have actually downloaded and installed Ergo, the first time you run it, you will see something called the Quick Start Wizard. And the Quick Start Wizard looks like this. And uh, it's uh, basically a simplified way to put in the basic information to get started uh, the first time you set up uh, Ergo. It's the only time you'll see it. First thing you do is you enter your location. Now, what we need is a name and a latitude and longitude for your location. And so it's good if you uh, collect that information beforehand. But if you don't, there's actually a link to a website you can go to to find that information very quickly. So the default location information is my home location, Calgary, Alberta, at 51 degrees north and 115 west. And you would just simply add in your location uh, and your latitude and longitude. Ergo needs that for its mapping and uh, propagation features. The next thing you do is enter your preferences for updating, and we strongly recommend that you uh, check both of these boxes and have the program check for new program updates when it's online, and also to automatically get propagation information when it's online, and you need to enter an email address just to make the FTP server happy when you go online to get that information. So this way, Ergo will keep itself up to date, and it will always have the latest propagation information available to you. Now the most important part is setting up your first receiver. Uh, Ergo enables you to actually control two receivers at the same time, but you can set up uh, uh, all of your receivers and give them names. Uh, we call that configuration in Ergo. And to configure a receiver, you need to have, give it a name, uh, a serial port, and a driver. And after you've set up uh, your first receiver, you can set up additional receivers from within the program. But this just gets you started. I'm going to hook up my ICOM 756 Pro 2, which I've got hooked up to this laptop on COM8. And uh, here's a list of all the drivers that are available. And so I want to find the ICOM 756 driver. And that's really all I need to do for the configuration for that receiver. Next, you want to configure your audio devices if you plan to stream receiver audio through uh, Ergo. And uh, one reason for doing that is you can, uh, you can display the spectrum uh, and filter your... Uh, your audio and you can also set Ergo to automatically record audio uh, at, uh, at unattended uh, times if, if you want to do that. Um, you might have your receiver audio just connected from 
its line output to your sound card, uh, which is what I have right now. You might have uh, audio streaming in through a virtual audio cable. So whichever you use, choose your uh, audio device. And if you have options for which lines you're using, you select them as well. And that's it. You get started. You push the finish button and Ergo will open up on the screen. Here we are. So a lot of people ask, well, why do I just see this empty frame <laughs> when I start Ergo? And uh, it's because Ergo is really a frame that holds a whole bunch of features. And within this frame, you can open a number of windows to do different things. And then you can dock them or place them on the screen. And Ergo will always remember where you put them. So one of the uh, windows is a status window. And uh, it shows the... Uh, current date and time and also propagation information and uh, this is what it looks like and uh, ergo will automatically go out to the internet and it will update your propagation information as you can see it just did and uh, and present that to you now what you can do with this window or any window really is you can just leave it floating on the screen uh, you can dock it to the left side uh, and Ergo has three locations for docking windows on the left side. Or, for most of the windows, you can actually dock them in a smaller format up in the toolbar. And that's what most people do with the, uh, with the status window, just dock it in the toolbar so it provides the information. Um, then, let's say you downloaded... Uh, the EIBI database, you want to open that up in Ergo. So you go to the File menu, click Open, and it will then show you the uh, the range of databases that you have already installed. What I suggest doing is creating a folder uh, within public documents called Ergo Data, and then you put each database in a separate folder underneath that, and that way you can just uh, keep things uh, simple and uh, and uh, you know where they are you can back them up and so on so i will open the uh, most recent eibi database there it is inside ergo and you can open multiple databases in ergo and uh, and switch between them if you want to okay so now that you've got the database open let's get that receiver running we previously assigned uh, the icom receiver to uh, com8 and uh, set the driver up and by clicking this we get the first time we run it an options menu uh, for example this driver controls a whole bunch of different receivers but it needs to know which one you're using and uh, here you tell it okay 756 pro 2 that's the way you go there we are we're connected to uh, the uh, icom receiver and i think we're listening to china radio international yes we are and it's on uh, 15 245. now within ergo you can control uh, how you want to uh, step frequencies you can select your step if you're doing shortwave listening you might want five kilohertz steps and then you can just move up and down and back and forward just uh, in a variety of ways. You can move by clicking these arrows or you can uh, just use the arrows on your computer keyboard to move around. Now the help file covers all this information and uh, the controls are either in the form of drop-down menus for switching mode or switching AGC and so on or you have uh, analog controls like volume where you can use arrow keys to move them up and down. Most people uh, will dock the receiver control window. As we showed you before, you can dock it at the side. Or you can float it and uh, dock it at the top along with your status bar. And just arrange those the way you uh, would like to see them arranged. It's pretty flexible. And when you're using the small window for receiver control, you move between your different control features. Uh, in a menuing type of system. It's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, then the other features for mapping and for uh, for propagation. Uh, you previously told uh, Ergo uh, where, <coughs> where your location was, so it will build you the first time you open map, it will build you a customized map indicating your location. 
and you can uh, use this map to uh, show the path of propagation from where you live to wherever the station might be. And you can also show propagation as well. That opens another window which you can dock. And so, for example, if you click Find in the database, it will look up what you're listening to. Here, here it, it knows you're on 15245, and it knows that China Radio International is active on that frequency. Uh, if you go to the map, you can project the short path from where you are. You probably don't need to display where you are, because you know, to the away location and ergo will also demonstrate the distance and it will also show the auroral zone so you know that for example you've got a good path right now going to china from western canada and it's not passing through the auroral zone and it's a distance of 9600 kilometers at 327 degrees from your location from propagation point of view I'm just going to reduce that audio because China Radio actually just went off the air. <laughs> From a propagation point of view, you can show the MUF chart. These are the frequencies on the left and the 24 hours across the bottom. And uh, your frequency is shown here. Uh, if the start and stop time for the broadcast is available, it will be shown as well. And the time of day is shown here. And you can see right now, this at the bottom is called the... Uh, um, lowest usable frequency so anything in blue is just not available to you the optimum working frequency is up here so actually we can tell from this graph this was a good time of day for China radio to use that uh, frequency to send a signal that you can hear in my home at least my home location in addition to the muff chart you can also show the field strength as well as the signal to noise ratio that's estimated by ergo for that transmission if you want more detailed planning information, you can actually uh, open up a window that shows the details of that propagation path uh, for this date, uh, these solar conditions, and uh, this frequency. And you can then pick out the best time of day. This shows that uh, around uh, 12 to 1300 UTC is the uh, best time of day to get a good signal on that frequency. And you can print that out if you want as well. So those are the basic features uh, that are available. Um, you probably saw me before click the Find button. So uh, anytime you uh, go to a frequency and you want to find something in the database, for example, if I change this to uh, something completely different and click the Find button, it shows that right now I can pick up... Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia on this frequency and roughly there's the path and it shows propagation is probably not very good right now so I I don't know if I'll actually get a very good signal no I'm just getting background noise on that frequency right now but anyway you can do all sorts of things like this if you want to tune the receiver from the database you just click on the frequency column and it will change the frequency to whatever uh, you've clicked on in the database and uh, you can also just click on any other column and it will show you the propagation and map information without actually changing the receiver. And if you uh, put in track as you change the frequency, the database will follow along so you can always keep track of what's on where you are. Now there's a bunch of filtering features on the database. For example, if you want to uh, find out what's on now, there is a list of all the stations in this database that are currently broadcasting. You won't necessarily be able to receive them. Oh, it just changed here because we uh, we crossed over the top of the hour, so I'll have to do the once on now again. There we are. So this is now changed. So the database keeps track of what time it is, what frequency you're on, uh, whether or not you uh, want to track your receiver. You can also do filtering. Uh, if you want to uh, set a filter for your database according to certain stations or according to certain transmitting locations, countries, languages, uh, and uh, frequency ranges, and time ranges. So basically all of the fundamental database uh, features are available to you and you can choose to use those or 
not use them, whichever you want. If you're using the ILG radio database, it's pretty big. It's got 30,000 records in it. So you may want to filter those just so you're not uh, facing all of them. So those are the basic features of Ergo. If you want to set up another receiver, you go into the properties box and uh, you can just configure receivers uh, and set them up on COM ports and then assign them to either Radio 1 or Radio 2 and they will then show up here in your uh, view menu item. You can also recall previous frequencies that you've used and uh, there's tons of other features. Um, you can do forecasts for propagation separately. You can uh, say figure out uh, what uh, a best frequency to listen to a certain station might be on 20 days from now. You can uh, stream audio through Ergo. You can scan uh, a range of frequencies uh, or you, you can actually record if you want to set Ergo up to record something at uh, you know at midnight or two o'clock in the morning you can do that as well. So there are the basic features. Uh, I appreciate very much the opportunity to present this quick start uh, information. You uh, can get more details by reading our FAQ or simply opening up the uh, help file in Ergo. It's, it's been updated and will give you all the information you need. Uh, we encourage you also to join our, um, our Yahoo group uh, where you can see postings from other Ergo users and also send requests or you can email me directly as well. My name is John Fallows. I wrote Ergo originally in 1997, updated it to Ergo 4 in 2001, and it's still going strong. Thank you very much.